Ian, thanks for joining me today. Now, can you start by just telling me a little bit about your current role and your background? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm currently a senior product manager for Shire. Um, I work in the regional division. I've uh, been there for around about three and a half years now. And uh, prior to that, I was working for a company called Menorini. Uh, most focused much more in that case on the primary care uh, market, where I was a product manager for a couple of years there as well. So we're really in the midst of a changing customer landscape right now. How have you seen the different stakeholder groups change over the years? There has been a significant change over the, the, the recent years. I mean, even five years ago, it was a very different marketplace to the one it is now. I think we've gone away from what the, might be described as the classic pharmaceutical company model of focusing entirely on our primary care prescribers and secondary care prescribers because they had a lot of freedom in the past to prescribe what they felt was clinically the best choice for the patient. And I think what we've seen is the influence of the payer groups um, become much more significant and much more noticeable um, in controlling and putting certainly, if not restrictions, certainly considerations around what an individual, individual prescriber can do. So certainly what might be classed under market access has become a much bigger stakeholder within the healthcare environment. Now, as we all know, in the UK, it's about to get a lot more complex with the proposed NHS reforms. So where do you think this will leave the decision-making power? I think the, the, there are a lot of unknowns, first and foremost, within the NHS and how the changes will pan out. I mean, obviously, with the, the pause, as it's described at the moment, and I think very interesting with the, uh, the services provided by any willing, and now it's any suitable provider, um, I think we can see within the changes there's a lot of turmoil anyway. Um, I think in terms of where the power will end up, invariably it will be much more with the prescriber um, in terms of them also being the payer. Um, so it's kind of going full circle in one respect, the prescriber getting control back again, which I've just said is maybe not what's happening, but that's only because they've become the payers as well. And I think the payers are now taking a much more active role um, and it'll be more in depth than maybe it was before because of the, the, the much smaller payer groups rather than central payer groups. Um, so payers is the short answer. Do you think the reforms that we're seeing and the changes in our healthcare system will actually be replicated elsewhere in the world? I think it's always said that no one else would ever design their healthcare system in the same way as the NHS has been designed. Um, and I think it's hard for me to imagine a country where they will have an NHS or pseudo NHS system. I think what you probably have already seen in other countries, so if anything, it's the other way around. Um, if we look at the insurance-based market, so Germany, for example, where you have a situation, the payers, either the insurance companies, take a very active role in what can and can't be used and how things are prescribed um, above the clinical control. Um, and I think that's probably what's going to be happening in the UK. So if anything, it's the other way around. And I guess the key thing from your perspective is what does this mean structurally and behaviourally for the pharma companies working in the UK environment? Uh, yet again, because of the unknown changes, it's always hard to predict exactly what it will mean. But I think there are some, same, some basic principles which will be um, a truism through the, through the income, upcoming years. Uh, primarily, I think our reliance on a frontline sales team to, whether it's primary or secondary care prescribers, their our reliance upon them will be reduced. So I think you will see a much more streamlined, um, and that's already happening and has been happening. Um, and obviously that happened first to the much larger companies with large sales team structures. They've been rationalizing, cutting back, looking for where they really make an impact. And that will mean that ultimately more focus has to go on what is termed under a broad umbrella as market access currently, but is really um, about us delivering a legitimate value messages to those people who are the new decision makers. Um, I think that will result in a, a smaller, slicker and more focused um, commercial arm, certainly, of pharmaceuticals. People are talking a lot about medicines delivering value to the customers and talking about outcomes measures. What does this really mean for you? It's an interesting question. Um, certainly, we've always heard about value and most of us who've worked within the industry for a while are fairly cynical because we still equate value to cost. Um, and that has been the experience we've had, many of us, when dealing with regulatory bodies and um, generally it's come down to cost. Um, I hope that going forward that will change and, and value to me means not just looking at the very one dimensional aspect of value as it has been in the past, which was purely on outcomes. When you say outcomes, people think mortality, survivability is almost invariably the 
response you get. And outcomes to me are actually more complex than that. Outcomes can mean a number of things. And I hope, certainly going forward, that outcomes in terms of quality of life, in terms of patient experience, are value much higher. And that will build up into an overall package of value. I think primarily we're getting away from this idea of pill in a box selling and into an environment where value is not just what the drug delivers, but the entire package a company can deliver around that product that will add value to the experience of taking that product, to the success of taking that product, which will ultimately end up in quality of life and or survival. And finally, it seems that patient groups really are an emerging force within the UK market. So how do you think pharma can best engage with those groups? Well, I think firstly, value is very much defined by patient experience and therefore the reason they are an emerging force within this environment is because they are able to contextualise the experiences that patients are having with the product. It's no longer just a pill in a box and these are the clinical data and these are the outcomes on a piece of paper. It's not so much about the biochemical marker attributes of a product. It's much about what it can deliver. So I think the best way we can engage with them, and it is a tricky proposition because of the rules and regulations under which we work, um, we probably have to be absolutely transparent. I think there could be no worse impression for the pharma industry if we're seen to be using them as our front men, as the people who are doing a, a sly sales job for us. We can engage and utilise them in a way that they can really explain to those decision makers, whether it be payers or prescribers, what the drug means in terms of their life and their lifestyle. And I think engaging with them in that honest, upfront way is probably the most effective way that we can engage with them. Ian, thanks very much for your time. It's been great speaking with you. Cool. Thank you.